The Great Lakes provide great fishing for a variety of trout and salmon, some of which can be very tricky to ID. We'll start by looking at some species that are relatively easy to identify. The first characteristic to consider is whether your fish has dark spots on light background or light markings on a dark background. If your fish has light markings, it is almost certainly a lake trout. Lake trout markings can vary from fish to fish, but the lake trout and all other members of the char genus, Salvelinus, have light marks on a dark background. The only other member of the char genus in the Great Lakes region is the brook trout, which has a square tail and is typically found in small streams, although coaster brook trout are sometimes caught in Lake Superior. All other Great Lakes salmon and trout will have dark marks on a light background during their lake dwelling life stage. If your fish has dark spots, the shape of the anal fin helps to separate three Pacific salmon species that die after spawning from the other species. Look at the length of the anal fin base and the length of the longest fin ray. If the fin ray is shorter than the fin base, you have a coho, chinook, or pink salmon. Other species will have a fin ray that is longer. Before you reach for the measuring tape, there's an easy way to check for this. Just fold the anal fin down and see if the longest fin ray would extend beyond the end of the fin base when fully depressed. The fish on the bottom has a fin ray that is clearly longer than the fin base, while the fish on top has a shorter fin ray. Tail spots provide your next clue to your fish's identity. If the tail is forked with large oval spots on both lobes of the caudal fin, then you have a pink salmon. The pink salmon, shown here beneath a larger chinook, is the smallest of the Pacific salmon, rarely exceeding 5 pounds. The oval-shaped tail spots are also prominent in spawning pinks, which are known as humpies due to the hump back exhibited by spawning males. Another obvious spotting pattern to look for is a fully spotted tail with small spots arranged in orderly radiating rows. If your fish matches this description, it is a lake run rainbow trout, also known as steelhead. Although the steelhead is the same genus as the Pacific salmon, it has a fin ray that is longer than the fin base, and it can spawn multiple times before the end of its life. Rainbow trout and steelhead are the same species, but many strains exist. Body shape and markings can be highly variable from one fish to the next, but the tail is always fully spotted with orderly rows. Returning to the flow chart, Chinook salmon and coho salmon have a relatively short anal fin ray and tail markings that are not always sufficient to distinguish between the two. Here we have a coho salmon on the left and a Chinook salmon on the right. A closer look shows that the coho salmon has a few dark spots confined to the upper lobe of the caudal fin, while the Chinook salmon has many dark spots on both lobes. This is typical for both species, but tail markings are highly variable in coho salmon in particular. Here we have a Lake Huron coho that shows several spots on the lower lobe of the tail and a Lake Michigan chinook with only a scattering of spots on both lobes. This coho salmon from Lake Superior actually has more spots on both lobes than the chinook example, so tail spots alone are not enough to ID chinook and coho. To get a better idea of what you have, take a look inside the mouth. At first glance you can see the inside of the coho's mouth is lighter. A closer look reveals that the teeth in the lower jaw are set into white gums in the coho, while the Chinook salmon has black gums in addition to black coloration further inside the mouth. Once again, there is some variation from one fish to the next. Here both fish have a mix of light and dark pigmentation inside the mouth. The Chinook even exhibits some teeth in the upper jaw that are barely rimmed with gray. However, the lower jaw of this Chinook clearly has black gums, while the coho's lower jaw has white gums. These two fish show the same pattern, but this particular coho has much lighter gray coloration inside the mouth. With poor lighting or live flopping fish, it can be easy to mistake a coho like this for a steelhead, which has both white gums and white inside the mouth. This is why I personally prefer to use the anal fin shape to rule out steelhead instead of mouth and gum coloration. A quick look at coho and chinook salmon anal fins reveals that there are some differences here too. To better describe the difference in shape, start by visualizing a point two-thirds of the length from the first anal fin ray to the end of the anal fin base. In coho salmon, the tip of the longest fin ray will extend beyond this point when the anal fin is depressed. In chinook salmon, it will not. Of course, there is some variation, 
But for adult cohos, the fin tip will fall in this green zone, and for Chinooks, the fin ray will be shorter. Here's an example with photos which show that the coho's fin tip can reach almost to the end of the fin base, but not beyond it, as in steelhead. So, in addition to the shape of the anal fin, other helpful characteristics to determine between coho and chinook salmon include spots on the table, although that's not always definitive, and the color of both the gums and the inside of the mouth. Returning to our flow chart, all that is left is brown trout and Atlantic salmon. Brown trout and Atlantic salmon are notoriously difficult to distinguish from one another, but when seen side by side, a few differences jump out. Brown trout tend to have a larger mouth and wider caudal peduncle than Atlantic salmon. In fact, the narrow caudal peduncle and stiff caudal rays of an Atlantic make it possible to lift and hold the fish by its tail, which is typically difficult or impossible with brown trout. Atlantics also generally have a slightly forked tail as opposed to the square tail of a brown trout. Markings can also differ between species, but there's so much variation from fish to fish that markings are not definitive. For example, brown trout typically have a heavily spotted adipose fin, while Atlantic salmon typically have no spots on the adipose fin. But here's an example of a beautiful Atlantic salmon from Lake Ontario with two spots on the adipose fin. You might also note the X-shaped markings on this Atlantic, but these are not definitive either. This Atlantic has no spots at all, while the brown trout has some X-shaped marks. The size of the mouth is a better characteristic to rely on, but still not perfect. When the mouth is pinched closed, a brown trout's maxilla or upper jawbone extends well past the eye like a largemouth bass's. The Atlantic salmon's maxilla usually does not extend past the eye. However, some spawning male Atlantics, in particular, do have a longer maxilla that extends past the eye. Confused? Don't feel too bad. These fish are closely related and show a lot of variability within the species. The most definitive characteristic actually requires a look inside the mouth, which can be tricky with a live fish. On the roof of the mouth, both species have vomerine teeth running down the center. Brown trout have two rows of well-developed teeth in a zigzag pattern, while Atlantic salmon have a single row of small vomerine teeth. So to recap, there are a few things that can provide clues to whether you have a brown trout or Atlantic salmon. Brown trout have a square tail, while Atlantic salmon usually have a slightly forked tail. Brown trout are very difficult to tail, and Atlantic salmon are fairly easy to hold by their caudal peduncle. Brown trout usually have spots on the adipose fin, while Atlantic salmon usually do not. The jaw of the brown trout extends past the eye, well, most Atlantic salmon have a jaw that does not extend past the eye. But the only really definitive characteristic is to look at the vomerine teeth on the roof of the mouth. Brown trout have two rows in a zigzag pattern, and Atlantic salmon only have a single row. All of the material in this video is drawn from an expert-reviewed Great Lakes Sea Grant Network brochure that is available on the Michigan Sea Grant Salmon ID webpage. There you'll also find this printable one-page guide and video links.